and now everything is weirdly gone big. Hang on, I can't see the chat anymore. There we go. <laughs> what happened? Aside from the cat, did it break the stream? Oh, it, she probably hit pause. I'm gonna stick it in. Yeah, she probably hit pause. <laughs> yeah, pause, exactly. I'm back. Ah! Okay, she's just stole the feather. <laughs> I gotta retrieve it, hang on. Yeah, you, you. You're actually on the whole stick. I don't want to hurt you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you see what I gotta deal with? Right. Um, I don't really think there's anything else. I'm trying to f find out where the next trigger is, basically. Um. Oh. And also trying to navigate this with one hand is tricky, right. Entrance... Just go back to the offices. Try Grossberg, maybe he'll be back. Aha! Callie, don't eat my wires. Okay. familiar clearing of the throat. <laughs> You're mere something, are you not? I was that understudy, yes. Phoenix right. <laughs> and you? You're mere something too, are you not? Her little sister, yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know. takes me back. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Ah, uh, Mr. Grossberg, sir. Hmm. Ah, yes, I beg your pardon. Of course, you came here to discuss something. What is it then? Something the matter? Ah! Oh, God, she's got it again. a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I, uh, just got up, you see. Well, well it's Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? What? Who, who, who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. Th this is terrible news indeed. I guess he hadn't heard anything. Mr. Grossberg, what ever happened to that painting? Oh yes, I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. I can't exactly claim it as stolen. I suppose it's my just desserts. Old, bitter desserts. Okay, well then, pre ah, present that. Hmm, strange. I feel as though I've seen this man somewhere before. Ah! Did you remember? He was a lawyer, here in my office! That's Hammond! Robert Hammond! Mr. Hammond? And do you say this is the man Miles Edge was shot? Yes. So this is the moment the crime took place, eh? Yes. I can't really say for sure that that's Edgeworth. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Not sure at all. Uh, I'm not sure I can help you with that. Okay, Aha, right. uh -huh, there we are. Hammond. Hammond. Who is this Hammond guy, anyway? Mr. Hammond. 
He was the defense attorney in that case. That case? Yes, the DL6 incident. DL6. Why does that sound so familiar? Perhaps you remember. I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss they used a spirit medium. Wait. You don't mean... Was that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. The spirit medium, Misty Faye, was your mother. Uh, your mother contacted the spirit of the victim. But the case was lost. No conviction was made. The DL6 incident, yes. Happened 15 years ago. Very strange case indeed. They never caught the criminal. Oh, they never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Misty Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. Her testimony led to charges being laid against one man. With Mr. Hammond, when the case and the suspect was declared innocent. Hmm. And the police blame my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out then, right, Mr. Grossberg? Uh, yes, 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 quite. Thank you. N no, please, don't mention it. TL6. Never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait. What does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father. Callie floats where? No, Callie is under my feet, literally. I nearly trod on her, checking where she was. <laughs> his father, Gregory Edgeworth. What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Oh! Gotcha. Kitty. Yes. No, Callie is well distracted by the feather on a string, thankfully, today. And it's literally... I've got the blanket over me, so it's like a little tent, and she's down between the sofa and the, the thing I've got my feet on. So, when I went to check where she was, I nearly trod on a little fluffy bum. Um, so, I'm just going to park the um, feather for now. When she starts playing with it again, I will um, distract her again. I don't want to have to shut her out, you see, because she's cute. Um, I don't know how late I'll go. Um, possibly get up to the trial depending on how long it takes to get there um, because I'm reading this really cool series at the moment about um, a cook who is a reluctant detective um, because people keep on getting murdered when she does her um, when she's when she's hired out for places it's really well written it's really cool um, so I've been reading that and um, basically stroking Callie Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait. This is a photograph of my mother. Mm -hmm. Misty Faye's photo added to the court record. Misty Faye. Ow. Mother of Mia and Maya Faye. Show this photograph to Miles Edgeworth. He'll have something to say to you then. Okay, guess where we're going next? Detention centre! What's this? I was hoping you'd gotten my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defence? It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. Oof. No, nope, I think she's under the sofa now. Oh well. <sighs> she has tried to jump into the green screen, like down the, the, the sort of the floaty bit, and also up underneath the green screen. 
which is less fun because it means that she's scratching at the back of my sofa. So I put some tape on that to hopefully persuade her not to do that. Um, but she's just too damn cute to, you know, you know, try and stop her doing much, aside from obviously nibbling my wires, because that is bad. Edgeworth. It's only been a matter of hours since you last visited, yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. Once you started something, you always see it through, though, don't you? About the DL6 incident. Right, DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. That is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know. But, I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like and I will answer to the best of my abilities. Hmm, who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. No, I don't matter. Okay. Talk! DL6. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Right before my eyes. He was shot and killed and I saw it all. <gasps> my memories from that time are... foggy. I suppose it's a self-defence mechanism. In any case, the suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that declared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the godlike murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium, that was my mum. What? You mean your... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end and now this. About to end? The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago on December 28th. December 28th? The statute of limitations on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statute of limitations runs out, legally the case never happened. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed forever. What happened to the suspect, the one who got F innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. No one knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so is your father a lawyer? He was Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were trying to follow in his footsteps? I'd rather not talk about it. Right. It pains me to ask you this now. <gasps> I know! You want us to defend you! Yes. Will you? Of course we will. Ah. Who could have guessed this day will come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind. I guess you don't really need to know. Huh? My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. Yay! Well, I guess we should... What's that? Earthquake! Nick, it's a big one! What? It's coming down. Phew, that was scary. Huh? What's Edgeworth? There! He's on the floor in the ball, shivering. 
Oh, I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. This surgery doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go. Ah, uh, right. We have to give Edge a slutter of request to Detective Gumshoe! Save. <sighs> We're still day one anyway. Move. Criminal Affairs Department. What's going on here? Eek! What's wrong, Detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Says she came to talk to you all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? Lots of heart. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? You want to give Mr. Edgeworth the death sentence, pal? No, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. Can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, you trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. So, what did Miss Hart say? She says she saw Miss Edgeworth fire the pistol. What the hell? What? She even had a photograph to prove it. Right, I saw it too. But you really can't tell from the photo who it is shooting. That's why she says she's going to enlarge the photo. She says it'll drop the quality in my, but should let us see you zoom. She can do that? Okay, so there's going to be an enlarged photograph that shows Ezra in the act. Great. Just great. In any case, she's going to be the one testifying tomorrow. Huh? happened to the other witness? Well, apparently there was a cancellation. A cancellation? I'm afraid tomorrow is going to be life or death for, for poor Mr. Edgeworth. We got a witness who says she saw the very moment of the murder. We got a photo taken when the shot ran out. I see that sounds like a pretty unreal case. <laughs> Excuse me. But wait, what did Pierre used to say? If he's innocent, there's got to be something I've overlooked. Sounds like Mr. Edgeworth is going to ask the state to assign a public defender. She's just asked to file the paperwork. But you still got time, pal. Go talk to him again for me, please. You have to convince him. You have to make him let you defend him, please. I know you're the only one who can do it, pal. You're the only one who can save Mr. Edgeworth. It's okay. I've got, I've got the letter. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal! Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, Detective. Well, see you in court tomorrow, then. Good luck, pal. Hey, you guys feel that earthquake a little while back. I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm going to go check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. Hmm. I wonder what it is with the stage with an earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Then again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. To be continued. Hmm. <laughs> Looks weird seeing 2020 written like that. It really does. That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40 year career. He is a god of prosecution, right? A god! Not a single case? <sighs> Excuse me.
Excuse me. He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone else I know Edgeworth. Hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor, vicious as I am. Vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So, was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me, times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Uh, Mia? Uh-huh. We could really... Be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been in training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what about timing? I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you risking about? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Head in. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defence is ready, Your Honour. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Phew. You seriously think that I would stand here? Were I not completely prepared? Right. My apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Ah, uh, uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident now. Yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now there happened to be a woman camping near on the edge of the lake. 12.10 she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Testify to the court about the arrest now. Wait, Mr. Von Karma? Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There isn't only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. D yes, of course, you're quite right. No, he's not. The arrest of Edgeworth. The man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We edited the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all, but the next morning a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Oh, certainly. Now! Oh, excellent. I took another screenshot. <laughs> okay. You receive.
received a call from a man? Uh, yo. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who had the two gunshots, right? Objection. That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Ugh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping, not a heart. What happened next, detective? How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Uh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Detective, you were refrained from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. So much to look forward to these days. There's no time for dejected daydreaming. Continue! Yes, sir. What was Mr. Edge was like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Yes, sir. I think he's got a share of objections. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. Never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Mm. Seems like gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue now. Did you find any clothes on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the arm fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well. The court accepts this bullet into evidence. Pistol bullet added to court record. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. Murder weapon? Pistol. Detective Gumshoe. That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right, sorry, sorry, Your Honour. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Ugh. He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. Left-handed. Order! Order! So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Yes, Your Honour. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. Five, three times. Okay. It's got to be important. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective? Yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Well, maybe someone hasn't been watching lots of CSI. Nick, he's glaring at me. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Hmm? Me? Uh, <coughs> Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. 
You could examine those ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Order! Order! This is bad. This may seem look like I twisted it. Well, Judge? I'd say it's almost decisive, yes? Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge? Yes. What are you doing? A ten minute recess? Now. But wait, I... I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Yes. Ahem. This court will take a ten minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? Defendant lobby number two. I need to take this time oh, hang on. in a minute. Alright. Take this time to get a new cup of tea. I should be back.
come back. I had to put the birdies back on, but um, Kelly's more interested in hanging out with us. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. <coughs> and that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes. It was me. What? But you must believe me, I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought at the time that he'd shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya? Huh? What? What? Any progress with Mia? Oh, uh, sorry, it's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm not good for anything in my neck. I can't call my sister. I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help her. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defence. It's more, I'm a spirit medium. We can't even contact spirits. Oh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, whoa, right? Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Oh. Uh, sorry. Whoops. Court is back. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Well, Miss Lotter Hart, take the stand. Lotter Hart, you are a research student at a university. Though I am? Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understood? You'll need to learn some manners. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Witness again. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come from the lake. When I looked out in the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of murder. Order, order, I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked out at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order! 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 I will have order! Why am I covered in fluff? Even kitten fluff. It's just fluff. You a fluffy kitty? Yeah. <sighs> well, judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. OBJECTION! Wait, Your Honour! I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. Cross-examination? 
We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words and they all read guilty. You lose. Or do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court. Contempt? Contempt of court, you know. I guess... I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? I think there was. I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Yeah. I got a bad feeling about this. Ah! I lost a feathery thing, hang on. I understand, I will cross-examine the witness. Very well. I pray for your sake, this isn't a waste of time. I would waste as much time as I like. <sighs> Just after midnight, you say? In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Hmm? Oh, yeah, well, yes. Oh, I think the uh, birdie video su suddenly got a YouTube ad. It's gone very loud in there. I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. Huh. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. <sighs> I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? Objection. What does a witness's motive for camping by the lake have to do with the case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait, wait, wait now. I'm the one that says that. Well then, say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. So you weren't looking at the lake at that time. No. I looked after I heard that noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions. Not leisurely chat with the witness. Mm. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? Uh-oh. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Were you watching the very moment the shot ran out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright, not meaningless babble. On karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep you from talking to the witness. To what end? Sure about that. Yeah, sure as a country girl can be. That sounds pretty sure. How come you're so sure? Well, like I scanned the old lake. Scanned the whole lake. 
Kinda sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Mm, it's hard, you... <laughs> Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. <sighs> no need for further questions. Objection sustained. Ugh. Uh, that's what I'm... Sustained! Yes, of course. Oh, great. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, Your Honour... You keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I am afraid that I will have to penalise any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood. Testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean. But if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Who was that? It was me. Is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lotta, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defence outburst. Answer me, Lotta. Ah, ID's got, just gone live. What's the big idea? Should she meet like me like some kind of criminal? I saw him, I swear it, I saw Edgeworth. Enough! Judge, declare the defence in contempt of court. Uh, yes, 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 of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. This is not going well. Wait. I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha. Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Order! 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 You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. Oh, bye, Superboy. Thanks for watching. Take care yourself. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made new testimony. The defence does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he is in contempt of court. No, I am. You're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Hmm. Very well. My F.A., you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya? Heh, <laughs> I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. Running out of time. Better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. I saw it clear today that the one of the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. Well, what about the other man? You cannot expect to be allowed to blithely ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. I believe you claimed there was a contradiction in the witness's testimony. Well, find it. If you can. Mr. Wright, I have to sign you a party. Come on! Can't 
one demise after season. Okay, right. Objection! Got you. Got you, Miss Hart, finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. The photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So? So? This picture was taken with professional high quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Moncarma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Ms. Hart. What? Could you see the defendant that night? Of course. I said I couldn't. I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Moncarma's carefully vague testimony. You're right, it was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So, once I was finished setting my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm, you use binoculars. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one had better be good. It was a heavy fog. How have binoculars changed that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him. Eh. Uh, I did, yeah. Enough. There is no room for doubt in her testimony. She sounded pretty doubtful to me. But I have to find a clear contradiction first. Don't care how many karmic objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in this testimony for the last thing I do. You mentioned you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars, for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Is that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? This is make or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Well, maybe I went to the way for there. Oh. 
Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. The camera is set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. Objection! You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness is not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honour. Well then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honour, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? The bloody good monster. Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy. Ah, oh, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? Oh, I never heard a low lake monster. You got proof or something. Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I have it. Proof. Miss Art is your own is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to the loud noises, correct? Thus this photograph here taken when the gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why I had to set your camera to respond to loud noises. Order! Order! I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart, you were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Oh, you lawyers that smart. So smart, boy. I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Hmm? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used, what you just used several minutes. Ah, what you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey! But as she so succinctly point, said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Ms. Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine, I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change, it has to. And I'm going to spot it. Actually, I'm not a research student at university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it had been if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. I heard the bang, I looked straight out of the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. And I saw a flash near one of the man's hands and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at the boat the whole time, crossed me out and hoped to fry. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Objection. Witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. <sighs> I claim the defence's right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honour. But the calm is up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because why? Was there a contradiction? Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. If you seem sure of yourself, you must have something in mind. <laughs> that'll be a first. Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at this time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honour. Okay. Hold it. 
exactly what sort of sound was it? Well, I've never, never heard one before, so I can't say for sure, but it sounded like a gunshot. It's a lot sharper sound than I would have expected. Hmm. There wasn't much else to look at. Yeah. She had heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there. I kind of doubt she'd waste any time looking at a boat. What? What did I do now? What are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Witness! Continue. Oh, dearish puppies, Pops. I'm getting there. Morning. Was there nothing on the lake but the boat at the time? Hmm? Wait, so you're thinking maybe you were shot from some other place? Don't think so, no. The lake was smooth as glass and no one was on the shore, neither. Hmm. I'm gonna find some sort of contradiction in this testimony. You won't be able to beat Ron Karma any other way. Has to be something. Is Gordy really all that newsworthy? Heck yes, they even had him on the TV. Not sure that hanging in the local news as rumour of the month segment qualifies. Last month's segment was Bigfoot sighted on Acorn Hill, I believe. Hey, they also had a picture in the newspaper. For real? Mr. Wright, this is one fight I do not believe you can win. Let's keep moving, shall we? Yes, Your Honor. Morning. I think it's time you told us why you felt you had to hide your true purpose at the lake. Look, if we got out what I was up to, the lake would be swarming with competitors. Competitors? Yeah, second rate shot bugs trying to skull, steal my scoop. Uh -uh. Is that the only reason you are hiding the truth? Well, actually. Mr. Wright, I'll not have you asking questions with no relevance to this case. Whatever you say, Von Karma, I know you told her to keep quiet. Really looking at that boat. What's with you? Of course, I was looking at it. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person be looking at it. I agree. Any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What? You all want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. <laughs> Order! Continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well... Well, now that you all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake. I mean, Gordy might be out there, no? Ms. Hart, are you saying that you're not watching the boat then? Sorry, y'all. I won't fib him, really. I was just, I thought, you know, he could be witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat till now. This, this is totally uncalled for. But hey, you got the photograph, you got proof. Mm. Still, we can't see who's shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo. <laughs> Witness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Shut my what? What was she going to say? She took the photo on what? Wait a second. She even had a photo to prove it. You really can't tell from the photo who's shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She says it'll drop quality in more, but it'll let us see you zoo. God, my accents are all buckled up now. She enlarged that photo. Why won't Van Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Van Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong, though. It'll mean prison for Edgeworth or worse. What should I do? I can show the enlargement. Ms. Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? 
Yeah, yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the cast? Because it does not exist. What are you all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place. You old fool. <laughs> What's the meaning of this, Von Karma? Um, Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Ooh, left hand! Gun in the left hand! Hmm. We still cannot see who is firing in this case. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Take photo at the record. Happy now, Mr. Wright? Hmm, has to be something. You asked for the enlargement, you got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over, obviously. Then I would like to close the cross-examination of Ms. Lodderhart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence, decisive witness, what else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo, somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Oh, I didn't actually mean to hit object to the enlargement. There is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What might that be? Mr. Wright, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Do you hear goes nothing? Show the judge what's strange about this photo. Take that! Here, Your Honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? Oh, uh, this man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence the left hand contradicts. Take that! The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, ipso facto, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not... Mr. Edgeworth. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honour? You have given us definitive proof today. We now know there is not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? Can I say first before I make a guess? There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. Order! Order! So you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honour. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Suicide is out of the question. An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. Distance? The victim was clearly shot from further than a metre away. A metre? That's three feet. There is no way it could have been suicide. 
Order! Order! Mr. Von Carber, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course. I already had considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated. Hmm. I see. Very well, allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun reveal that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial for the day. The court orders the defence and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honour. That is all. This court is adjourned. December 26, 1.15pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew, it was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I have yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake anyway? You didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meteor away too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Hmm. Look, I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh. Right. What? Tell her something from me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Did it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thanks, Edgeworth? I requisitioned the transcript of Lotta's entire testimony. I thought you might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. To be continued, and a good place to leave it for tonight. Okay, so we can override that one. Okay. So, that's the end of day two. Oh no, we've got day two investigation. Okay, so we've done the trial, we've got an investigation still, but um, we did day one. But it's been two and a half hours, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, so, ow, I put my foot to sleep. So yes, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, despite the cat's technical issues where the stream glitched for a moment, Hopefully it's still recording and everything. The buttons are still on and you're still watching. So I'm hoping it's recording. Um, but for now, I've been Joe, otherwise known as Angel SK. Thank you for watching. I'll be back definitely Thursday. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. I might feel like streaming again. Or Scruff might be streaming. So if he does, then I'll probably host it. Um, you're not watching. You've been replaced by a kitty. Okay, Leaky. You do that then. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to go read my book and um, give Kelly lots of attention because I've been ignoring her. Well, I haven't been ignoring her. I've been bribing her with a feather all night. Um, so, but for now, thank you so much for watching. And again, I'll see you later.